Hello, welcome back to my channel and to our home gym renovation. So we have an additional building in our garden separate to the main house and inside there we have an indoor pool which is drained and not used anymore and that will be another project at some point. And then we have this space which we've been using as a home gym for the last two and a half years. It's a pretty decent size for the equipment that we have and use. I'll add the measurements to the description box below this video for anyone who's interested, but it was in dire need of a makeover. It just felt a bit dark and gloomy in here and it was a little bit rough around the edges. So first things first, the space needed to be cleared as much as possible. Now we have some pretty heavy and large equipment in here so we knew we wouldn't be able to fully empty it but most things were moved out. The existing flooring was a dark grey blue carpet tile and as that was taken up we could see some water damage underneath which needed to be investigated. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again, when renovating you'll almost always come across issues as you start taking things apart. So it's worth just bearing that in mind if you're setting a budget. The water damage turned out to be from a piece of damaged guttering so that was at least an easy and affordable fix. The damaged base floor was then removed along with the door into the pool maintenance cupboard and this piece of wood which was acting as some kind of partition. The previous owners used this space as a workshop so I'd imagine that it was some sort of support for a workbench. That brick wall with the leaking gutter on the outside had been painted internally by the previous owners so Simon used white spirit and a wire brush to try and strip off as much of that paint as possible. When using paint on brick, you do need to use a breathable paint specifically for bricks. Lime wash is often a good option. Otherwise, if you use some kind of latex paint, then this can cause issues with damp and crumbling bricks over time if the bricks can't breathe. Now granted this tends to be more important when painting the exterior of brick as this is where you'll get more moisture but in this case we just wanted to make sure that there was no further water damage which could cause issues with the bricks in future. Simon then applied a layer of tanking slurry as an added precaution against any water from outside. This building did already have electricity but as we were going to be boarding out the space and having it plastered we got to decide where we wanted our new plug sockets to go. We had to think about the layout of the new gym space and where certain equipment was going to go so that we could figure out where there needed to be sockets. The treadmill, for instance, runs off electricity, so we knew that we needed a socket close to that, and then also for the TV and the speakers, which we already had been using previously. Simon then started to fit some new plywood to any areas where he'd removed the old plywood. This was acting as a base floor, which is different to the main house where we had the entire ground level pumped with screed to level it out, as you may have seen in some of our previous renovation content. The first layer of tanking slurry had been left to fully dry and then a second layer was mixed up and applied to any areas that required it for added protection. 18mm plywood was being used to level out the floor, ready for our chosen flooring to go on later in the project. This had to be done in two stages because we had to work around the equipment we had in there, moving it to one side once that side was done to then complete the other side. We decided to board out and plaster the walls so that the space felt more like a room and less like a garage with all the exposed bricks and breeze blocks. Battens were secured to the walls with screws and plugs but where the tanking slurry had been used on the walls they were attached to battens on the floor to avoid screwing into the tanking slurry. Insulated plasterboard was then cut to size and attached to the battens to create new walls. As I've mentioned before, we will have a DIY crack at most tasks, but plastering really is an art form and it's something we know we just can't do. So when it comes to plastering, we always hire a professional to do the job. And we've got a couple of plasterers on our books that have done work for us previously. So we got one to come in and plaster the new walls. Whilst the plaster was left to dry, Simon maneuvered the treadmill to the position we decided on and found that the flooring wasn't quite as level as it needed to be. 
At this point, I was due to go on my Florida trip in about a week's time, so we decided to leave any of the painting until after I got back. And then whilst I was away, Simon used a self-leveling compound to level out the floor in that area. Now, as some of you may be aware, when I was in Florida, I did sustain a fractured rib, which was pretty painful by the time that I got home and the Disney mega high had faded away. So this meant that the task of painting was left for a good five weeks before I felt comfortable enough to start it. The bonus of this was that the plaster had a decent length of time to fully dry out and the floor levelling compound had ample time to fully cure. Work on the garden had also started during this time so that caused another delay because I was going to be spraying the UPVC windows and needed to have those open which I couldn't because of all the new patio slabs being cut which caused crazy amounts of dust. As prep, I had to first clean with sugar soap and then lightly sand all of the frames with a medium sandpaper. I brushed down the visible metal framework to remove any rust and then gave that a coat of combi primer and left that to fully dry before coming back to finally start spraying the frames. I've seen so many people use Rust-Oleum's UPVC paint that I wanted to try it for myself. As I was going to be using a sprayer for a smooth finish, I did have to dilute the paint with water first. I mixed up my paint in a tub before decanting it into my sprayer and then began spraying my first coat. Using the sprayer barely took any time at all, in fact it was less than 20 minutes, and it needed two coats for an even finish. Once the windows were done, I could remove all protective sheeting from the surrounding walls and ceiling and then begin with the mist coat on the fresh plaster. So we've gone through this before in our content, but you need to apply a mist coat, which is basically water diluted paint, to freshly plastered walls and ceilings and anywhere else before painting them, otherwise the paint will just peel off. Once the mist coat was dry, I started painting with our chosen paint, which is Linen Wash by Little Green. Now, this may be controversial, but we did decide to paint the wooden tongue and groove ceiling. And I know there's gonna be some of you crying out, no, but it's a decision that we're both really happy with now that the space is finished. This task was so fiddly and lengthy and we did have to borrow a stepladder from a friend so that I could reach into the tallest parts of the ceiling. It took me almost two solid days to give it a couple of coats of another little green paint in the shade Roman plaster. And now onto the flooring. We had decided to use laminate in this space after much deliberation and we chose this light oak coloured laminate from UK Flooring Direct which they did supply us with for this project, which is why it will be marked as an ad PR product on screen. This flooring has a two millimeter acoustic underlay attached to the back, so no other underlay is required, making it an easier job. And it also has a 72 hour water resistance, which makes it suitable for any room in the house, including bathrooms. And that's why we thought it would be a good idea for the gym. It's a hard wearing flooring and comes with a 15 year residential warranty, plus it's DIY friendly, which obviously is a bonus for us. Now, this isn't our first time laying laminate, although it has been a good few years since we have laid laminate flooring, and that was in our previous home. But to be honest, it is so easy to do. The planks click together with little grooved out sections on all sides and then using a rubber mallet and a little buffer piece of wood, Simon made sure that each plank was firmly in position. Once you've got your first row down, the rest goes down so quickly once you get into the rhythm. Now there are two tips often spoken about when discussing the direction of how flooring should be laid, so the orientation of the planks. Some say the planks should be laid in the same direction as the longest measurement of the space, which is what we chose to do here. But other advice is to lay the planks in the same direction as the flow of light, which in this case would have been from the windows running to the back of the space. I honestly think it's down to personal preference, but we're really happy with the direction that we chose to lay it in. In this space, it just makes sense. Now, when it comes to end sections and making the cuts, we take a plank and place it in position and mark where the cut needs to be made. 
We used our Ryobi miter saw for all of the cuts, but previously we have just used a hand saw. The miter saw just makes things quicker, easier and less strenuous. Once the piece is cut, that gets slotted into place and the remainder of that plank is then saved for a cut to be used at the other end. As you'll notice, the flooring isn't glued down. You can get flooring, which of course can be glued down, but at this point, the flooring is simply laid on top of the base floor and not held down by anything. And this is why it's important to remove any skirting boards before laying flooring like this, as the skirting boards will sit on top of the laminate, which will anchor it down and provide a seamless finish along the edges of the walls. But we'll get to that a little bit later on. We had to carefully maneuver those two heavy and large gym pieces of equipment onto the laid flooring using cardboard and towels and a lot of patience so we could finish off the rest. But ideally you'd have a completely clear space to work when laying flooring like this. All the new electrical sockets and switches were installed along with the new lighting that we'd chosen and we installed the TV back on the wall in its new position which is now visible from all pieces of equipment. We put together our rubber gym mats which slot together kind of like a jigsaw puzzle and then slid those into position under my treadmill and the other equipment and then I gave everything a really good clean. Our skirting boards had been ordered a few weeks previous, but there was a delay in those arriving, which is why we continued to crack on with the project. I used the empty swimming pool in the space next door to paint them when they finally did arrive, and then Simon cut the various lengths we needed before using an adhesive to secure them onto the walls, and then a few nails from our Ryobi nail gun, just for good measure. Simon caulked along the top of the skirting boards where it meets the walls and then I went along behind him with my caulking tool and a damp cloth to smooth it out for a nice even finish, also filling in any of the nail holes at the same time. Once that was dry I went around and painted along the tops and any filled holes so that everything was even in colour. And now for the finishing touches. We bought a few IKEA Buster units and created a storage unit underneath the TV so that we can keep various bits and bobs in there which aren't necessarily used every day. I wanted some greenery in here but although this room looks like it gets a lot of light it is actually north facing so I didn't want to risk having a real plant out here so instead I decided to use this large artificial olive tree which we had inside the house. We haven't opted for any wall gym mirrors, although this is something that we may decide to add at a later date if we feel that we need them, but this mirror was one that we had out here previously, so it's just being propped in this position for now, along with this floor fan, which will definitely be needed for the warmer weather ahead of us. Now we don't have a door into the pool section yet, and this entire space transformation will be another project further down the road. So in the interim, I just bought a tension rod and used a linen curtain that we already had to cover the site of the empty pool. I bought this custom wall sign from a seller on Etsy and then added some baskets to the shelving unit that we placed inside the doorway to the pool maintenance cupboard instead of using a door. The back panel of this unit is attached with magnets so it comes off easily if we need to access inside the cupboard. And there we have it, another project ticked off the list. This space feels so much nicer now, especially for things like yoga, which is supposed to be very calming and zen and relaxing. The space now feels fresh and light, and it's somewhere that we enjoy spending time and doing a workout now. As I've mentioned throughout this video, the indoor pool section of this building is another project on the list, and I've shared mood boards for that over on Instagram. And we'll be looking at doing a makeover of the outside of this entire Entire building as well so that it fits in with our new garden which is another project that we'll be sharing in a video soon but for now thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time mm -hmm.